welcome to this nutritional map for testosterone. This is really an easy cheat sheet for you to enjoy and get used to and basically tick the boxes to see whether you're on track. So let's have a look at the first layer for the nutrition map for testosterone. So the first thing we want to look at is what the research says is that being in a caloric abundance or at least sufficiency is really important for optimal testosterone. Now it's impossible, it is possible even in a deficit to, to have good testosterone levels if provided the deficit isn't too extreme. But by and large, what the research shows, it's a lot easier if you focus firstly on caloric sufficiency, making sure that your body's not in a taxed state. And the reason for this is that if an organism in nature doesn't have adequate or sufficient supplies of calories to indicate to its system within that it is able to op have all its basic operations functional, it won't indicate to its own organism that it's ready to reproduce because testosterone is ultimately a reproductive hormone um, and it's a sign of vitality in life and optimization. Um, and if you are in survival mode and your body's signaling, oh, well, we don't have enough uh, energy from our environment to really excel uh, and survive, therefore it will hunker down. And so the first thing that the research indicates um, that's a very low-hanging fruit that you can optimize straight away is, are you in a caloric um, appropriate amount of calories for your body? The flip side is if you're having too much and you're becoming obese or overweight, that actually has a, neg uh, a negative effect on your hormone levels as well. So it's very important to hit the sweet spot when it comes to testosterone from a natural point of view. So that's the first box to tick. The next box as we move up the ladder is ensuring that you have the essential fatty acids and even the non-essential fatty acids. Um, so let's actually start with what the research indicates, surprisingly for many people, is that saturated fat is a very important part of getting your uh, fat in. Now, this has to do with cholesterol, and we know that the Leydig cells get absorbed, or sorry, the luteinizing hormone gets absorbed into the Leydig cells, and then it combines with what we call cholesterol, which then creates testosterone. Now, your body does create its own cholesterol, but what the research is seeming to indicate is that when you optimize, not overly, but in a, in a good balance, having saturated fat, it optimizes and enhances the process of absorption. So you, basically what I believe is happening is your body's having less reliance on having to rely on itself to produce its own cholesterol. Uh, and when you supercharge that with enough saturated fats, it can rely more easily on the nutrition you're feeding it as opposed to taxing the body even more. And I believe that's why it's optimizing it. But this is what the research is indicating anyway. We also know that um, omega-3s are very important uh, for testosterone, particularly getting the ratio correct. And we know in the Western diet, omega-3s are deficient and omega-6s are a bit exaggerated. And so what we need to do is we need to get that ratio into balance. So cod liver oil, fish oil, fish, things such as grass-fed and grass-finished beef, these things will get the right ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s. With that, omega-6s are still important, but we don't have to worry about that as much because they're naturally in the Western diet. So what we have to focus on is getting that ratio correct. Now here's another one, which is a non-essential one, but omega-9s actually are really... Uh, helpful for optimizing testosterone. In particular, we can find this in a source called um, olive oil, and two tablespoons of olive oil per day has actually been seen to really increase testosterone. In fact, they did a study with rats, and they were able to feed them uh, on, an, on a diet of olive oil, and what they found is the literal size of their balls was heavier, so the testicles were heavier, um, and they tested their serum testosterone levels and it found that they were higher as well. So we know that um, for humans, two tablespoons of olive oil will help this. And what's basically happening there at a cellular level or an intratesticular level is that the omega-9s are going in to enhance the absorption of the cholesterol of the latex cells and they're optimizing the process. Um, so something unique is happen happening there. But there's just an overall synopsis. There's a lot more to it than that. But 
this is just a really basic overview of what you can do straight away. And this is how I two to three times my testosterone just by applying some of these factors here. Let's move on to the next layer, which is getting your essential minerals and vitamins. Now, obviously, all of getting all of your important ones are essential just for, for normal functioning, but we do know that when there's a slight deficiency, you can get a definite bounce back on your hormone levels. So let's start with vitamin D, and we know vitamin D is very important for helping the absorption of cholesterol. It's helping the synthesis of testosterone, both at the primary area or, or your brain function, ensuring that your hypothalamus is activating, being activated correctly, but also at the testicular level. So vitamin D is a very important one. Vitamin A has a specific um, function as well uh, to do with sperm health and more other, other areas of that. Um, the, the B vitamins, now there's obviously many of them, but all of these are important. They all play a different, unique role, particularly vitamin B6. Um, is going to help with reducing prolactin um, and estrogenic uh, symptoms, but making sure you can optimize your B vitamins, obviously niacin, vitamin B3, it's going to help with NAD production, which has an indirect effect on testosterone, but all of these are going to be important. You have vitamin E, again, this is going to help sperm motility and sperm health. So these vitamins are really important. Now we just jump into the low-hanging fruit when it comes to your minerals and zinc. Obviously, we know that if you have a deficiency in zinc, it, you have subpar sperm uh, number, sperm motility, sperm morphology. And so what happens is when you can optimize in zinc, you'll get a bounce back as well. And people often don't realize how deficient they are in the minerals until they start supplementing. But better than that, you can get a blood test to find out what your panel's revealing. And then you don't have to do guesswork. You can supplement directly and then take um, a post blood test to see where you're at. Selenium also very important in test, test, uh, testosterone synthesis. Magnesium is going to optimize all these processes. Now there's a supplement you can take called ZMA, which is zinc, magnesium, and B6, and that combined has a very powerful synergistic effect. And then we have boron, which is another really interesting mineral, but this will particularly have the effect of freeing up more free testosterone from your SHGB or your sex binding hormone globulin. So what that does is it's going to work on the, the hormone that binds up your testosterone and it's going to have the net effect of creating more free testosterone. Next layer here we want to look at is your protein to carb ratio. Now, protein is an interesting one because the studies reveal that it doesn't seem to have a direct impact on testosterone levels. But if you are putting your body through resistance training and you're putting time under tension, what's happening is that you're basically, if you don't have adequate protein, then you're doing yourself a disservice in that you're not increasing your protein synthesis you're not optimizing the amount of muscle mass you have. And as we know, as you increase more muscle tissue, you increase the androgen receptors. And we know that when there's more androgen receptors, they're able to take in more testosterone molecules. So what's important here is getting the right balance. We also know the research points to that carb can be important for testosterone levels. Now, this can happen through the dopamine pathway. It can also happen through the serotonin pathway. But what's important to understand is that carbohydrate can have a positive impact on testosterone levels. Um, but the research just isn't there directly for protein. But as I've said, it's going to have an indirect benefit for your muscles and ultimately increasing your androgen receptors. Because let's just face it, if you have less androgen receptors available, then you have less, even if you have the testosterone available to go into them, it will be wasted because you won't have the sufficient amount of androgen receptors to take in the optimal amount. So over time, it's important to focus on that one. Now let's go to the top of the layer. Now what I say is work into this level if you want to do it sequentially before you even consider exogenous testosterone. This is what I suggest just going through and seeing how you feel at the end of this protocol. Uh, the one up here is the additional supplements. Now there are many, many different ones that aren't even in the four that I've labeled here, such as Fidogius agrestis and um, a few others to mention. But let's just start with some easy ones that have, have got some mixed research around them, but there's enough anecdotal evidence, um, there's enough 
researched evidence on these, I wouldn't say from a Cochrane meta-analysis that they, they hold up, but definitely from many people's reviews and from some research indicates that these have beneficial effects. So you've got fenugreek, which can have a big impact on total testosterone, Tongat Ali, which can have a good effect on um, free testosterone, DIM, which will have an impact on your estrogenic effects, so detoxifying estrogen, um, blocking some of the pathways of estrogen. And this is more to do with your estrogen testosterone ratio and balance. Obviously, it's not ideal to crush all estrogen. It's important to get the right estrogen, as we know the research shows that estrogen is important for ultimate health, for bone health, um, for brain health, uh, also for libido. So if you crush estrogen too far, it's not a good thing. But DIM will help to optimize the ratio. Um, and then you have something ginseng as well, which will help in the overall effect. So anyway, here's the nutrition roadmap for testosterone from a really basic entry-level point of view. If you're looking to optimize your hormones naturally, then this is a really good stepping stone to get into. Now, if you want personal coaching and you want to uh, fine-tune and streamline this process for yourself, feel free to um, flick me a message and we can look at a consultation. All good. See you on the next video. Ciao.